Reports out of Boise last night say that Kelly Papinga has resigned his position at Blast State. Yeah. And he is coming to Provo to uh, be one of the new defensive coaches for Kalani Sataki. Yep. That's a big story this morning. Like, there's a lot going on. Today is a college football news day. It is going to be heavy in news. I would suspect that if Sean New is the next defensive coordinator, you remember during the show on Friday, uh, we were getting texts and information. People were telling us, hey, Sean Nua has agreed in principle to become the new defensive coordinator at BYU and needs to wait until you know the season comes to an end for USC. Well, guess what? Pretty much the season came to an end on Friday night in Vegas for USC as they lost the Pac-12 championship game to Utah. Yeah. I would expect to get some traction the next day. Today or tomorrow, I would expect to hear an announcement uh, because I don't think Kelly Papinga is a defensive coordinator. From what I understand, he is going to be, um, you know, really an important mentor, leader, co-coach with Kalani Sataki because, you know, to, to dip the toe into the BYU water, a lot of people question some of the decisions in game and, and you know, in preparation for games that Kalani Sataki made um, and bringing in a veteran guy who's seen and done a lot of things like Kelly Papinga, that's a big hire. And you bring in a guy like a Sean Nua, who has been a part of some really good programs now, including Michigan and USC, obviously, that's a big hire because you're replacing guys, you know, that, you know, Elisa Tuiaki, the Ed Lambs of the world, you know, Kelly Papinga's going to step in. You're replacing your linebacker coach. Kelly Papinga can step in. He is an elite linebacker coach, right? So my guess is that he's going to have his hands on linebackers, and I would guess he... He's got a lot of experience, Kelly does, with special teams. I mean, special teams were a disaster this year. So it makes a lot of sense to me that you surround a guy like Sean Nua, who is your new defensive coordinator, with coaches like Kalani and Kelly who can lift him up and rise him up. And obviously, Papinga and Nua have a lot of relational experience together. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how this staff comes together, but I think what you said about BYU and what they're trying to do with the defensive coaching staff makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I don't think they're trying to trying to put labels on people. I think they're trying to build the absolute best defensive room that they can build, and then they'll figure it out. Like they'll, they'll kind of work together as a team to figure out what the best fit is for everybody. You know, obviously, you know, it's not rocket science that Newell would be the defensive coordinator, but I think when you start getting into the Papingas of the world and sort of those the the depth in the coaching staff. That's where I think the improvement in the leaps and bounds and progress can be made because, yeah, great, you replace your defensive coordinator, but your defensive coordinator isn't isn't you know spending two hours a day coaching linebackers on hitting the a gap correctly, you know. So you need better depth that way. So to me, yeah, I, I, I yeah, you're filling out your coaching tree, but I really do think that there's there's kind of this small shift happening where Kalani just wants the absolute best coaches he can get. And I think any time that you have that mentality, it's like, dude, it's like prime in the transfer portal. Hey, I want to get the absolute best talent in here that I can put on yeah. the field. Well, hey, I'm Kalani Sataki. My team wasn't good enough last year. So now I need to go out and find the absolute best guys that I can find to coach this football team. And we'll figure out the labels later. That, to me, is the correct way to go about it. Yeah, and I, I think there is, I mean, there are a lot of names out there. You know, there's a lot of people who believe Jay Hill's going to come and be the defensive coordinator. I don't know why he would leave, leave Weber State to step down from being a head coach to being a defensive coordinator. I don't know that that makes a lot of sense. Um, I could see Jay Hill being an assistant head coach and taking a position group, but it doesn't make sense to me that that you have a guy in Jay Hill that's going to leave Weber to be a defensive coordinator in, in the Big 12. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, I think with the volume of head coaching jobs that are going to open up, uh, I think Jay Hill is a very interesting, a very interesting candidate. And the issue for Jay Hill is, are you at BYU? Are you committing to BYU for five years? You're probably not. If Jay Hill, let's say Jay Hill comes to BYU and all of a sudden they have one of the top 20 defenses in the country. How long is Jay Hill your defensive coordinator? Probably not a long time. And I think turnover is about the last thing you need a year from now at BYU. Yeah. You need your coaches in place two, three, four, five years. And then every year, maybe you lose this guy or that guy or your wide receiver coach goes to be a quarterback coach or... Okay, I totally understand that. But you cannot have 
consistent turnover on your coaching staff. Yeah. You've got to have stability because that's what wins, especially in today's NIL transfer portal world. You can't have consistent turnover on your staff. But I think with all due respect to Elisa Tuiaki, like I think that, you know, I, I, I think that he, you know, probably had no business being a defensive coordinator from being honest. Like, you yeah. probably should have been a position group. Tanner now. says, by the way, it was fair for me to think you guys wouldn't believe the Papinga report because you've consistently criticized every other reporter in sports and you call their stuff fake. That's well, just not true. That's not true. And I, I mean, dude, so I, this is what I don't understand about a guy like Tanner. I don't know why you want to pick fights every day. I totally don't. If you we're go and so wave. bad at our, at our job, don't be here. Don't be here, dude. Like, if, if we just rip every reporter, don't be here. Yeah. You don't have to tweet with us. You don't have to watch the we show. We tell you to read Tony Jones' material all the time when <laughs> like, we talk jazz. We tell you the good and the bad. Like, yeah. I, 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 I'm not going to sit here and give you a free pass on this one. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous for you to say that we rip every reporter because we don't. We don't. But we're definitely going to rip the soccer reporter, the MLS reporter, who has an, uh, a, a college football player or an AP vote. Yeah, that's an, AP vote. an absolute. That is an absolute travesty and injustice to the sport. Someone who doesn't cover the sport full time has a full time vote. Yeah, we're going to talk about that, right? Just the same way that I'm going to sit on this show and he's going to sit on this show and repeatedly say, "There's one guy in this town." With all due respect to everybody else in the in the clique that covers the Jazz, that you should be reading, and that's Tony Jones and nobody else. Yep. You want material on the Jazz? Go to Tony Jones. He's excellent at what he does. But as far as the other names, I would not recommend you go to them. With all due respect, they're not bad people. I just don't like what they do. That's yeah, all. Totally agree. Steven Smith gives us a $10 tip and says, for USC not making the college football playoff, will it affect the Pac-12 standing as a conference to get a TV deal and convincing other teams to join the Pac-12? Um, I think the biggest thing for USC is they're not going to be in the Pac-12. That's what's going to affect the conference. I think that if you are the Pac-12, you're, you're in no man's land because you need... Southern California, you don't have like this UCLA thing that should be ironed out this week. What, it, what does Amazon say to the Pac-12? And we reported it last week that the Pac-12 has been leaning on Amazon to be their tier one distributor. Yeah. Where their biggest games go on Amazon. The issue for the Pac-12 is they want their biggest games streamed on Amazon and shown on ESPN or Fox television. And Amazon, that's a deal breaker for them. Why would they do that, right? Why would they pay for that? And as far as ESPN is concerned, ESPN wants all tier one and tier three rights, which is what they got in the big 12. Because what is ESPN going to do? They're going to stream your games on the ESPN app and they're going to broadcast them on ESPN, the family and networks, the ESPN you know. networks and ABC. So the Pac-12 doesn't want that. The problem is the Pac-12 doesn't have Southern California in any way, shape, or form. They have nothing south of of Berkeley. Yeah. Nothing. They have nothing south of Berkeley. And, and I want to make this point again, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm being 100% genuine. I think sometimes people get confused when, when we say, hey, SC's going to the Big Ten. People think that they, they pack up the U-Haul and move the building out to the Midwest. They're, they're not doing that, right? <laughs> like, they're, they're going to be in Southern California. They're, they're literally the University of Southern California. They're going to be there. So I, I know that that might seem silly, right? That might seem like, obviously. But I, I just like to say that because so often when we have these conversations, we're like, oh, SC's going to the Big Ten. It's like they're getting on, on, a, on a U-Haul truck and they're moving all their stuff to the Big Ten, and that's not what's happening. No. It's just literally repainting the field and redistributing uh, the product on TV to fit the Big Ten's setup and model and everything. So that's what I'm saying. Like you, you, you look at SC, and they're just getting started. This is just the tip of the iceberg. And frankly, when Ohio State loses in the college football playoff, and when Michigan loses inevitably in the college football playoff, they're going to be regretting that big time because SC is going to come in and be a real problem in that conference. You're not going to have a cakewalk to get to where you want to go anymore. And that, to me, is why the SC and Lincoln Riley setup is so powerful because now you get to come in and essentially be, you know, a bracket buster, if you will. You get to come in and yes. rock the boat in the Big Ten and be that team that the national media is going to cover now. And the Pac-10 is going to have to find a way to deal with that. 
Yep. Uh, thanks for the $10 tip, Stephen. Appreciate that. Boyd Lake uh, says, so does Jaron stay at BYU? I think he might. I think there's a chance. I don't know why you would because he is – I mean, he would be a top five quarterback coming out, especially with Penix staying. I mean, it. it I think Jaron Hall loves playing football at BYU, but he's going to get paid. and yeah. I, So I don't know why he'd hang well, out. Well, I just don't know why you would stay to uh, – at a program that's getting all these changes. Well, and you're going respect. to lose a lot of games this coming year. I mean, it yeah. is a steep hill to get in, get up to speed in the Big 12. Yeah. So for him, I mean, he's not going to look as good as he looked this year at times. Uh, Provo Cougar fan says, can a portal player hire an agent? Any player can hire an agent. Um, with NIL, you know, being the way that it is, most guys have agent relationships already. Yeah. Um, you know, like it, Harris LaChance told us he has an agent and he's going to the draft. Like, I mean, they, they, that process is, is, is completely different now. Um, and it, because you used to not be able to hire an agent because of amateur status. Now that doesn't play a role anymore. There's yeah. no such thing as that. Um, and the portal is very interesting. All it is, is a line of communication. It allows people to talk to other people that that's all it is. It allows universities to talk to players coaches to talk to players and and facilitate that move and unfortunately i think what most people forget is it's a negotiation piece yeah if you're in the portal i mean dj ui from um clemson got benched and he entered the portal today I want so more. now granted he's an overrated guy in my opinion yeah. he is he is a guy that i don't think is a number one quarterback at a p5 program it's just my opinion um, but he's going to be able to go out and see what his value is in different in different parts of the country. And schools will say, hey, we'll give you $30,000 a month in NIL money. You know, we'll do X, Y, Z. We'll do – that's what the portal's done, and I don't necessarily love it. Uh, Lord Radon says they get a player or two they that should be D1 but aren't and just roll people. How good will he be when the other teams are better? I don't know. I think you're talking about Prime. Agree with that. Uh, San Diego State said Harbaugh did it. Dion will do it. We'll see. We'll see. What do you um, mean Harbaugh did it? Jim like Harbaugh. At Michigan? Jim, uh, at Michigan and at Stanford, Harbaugh did it. Um, what do you think Prime Prime's long-term goal is? Coach a major program or NFL? I think he wants to win a national championship as a college football coach. Yeah. I don't necessarily believe he wants to go to the NFL. I don't. Uh, Lord Radon says Harbaugh has been a success no matter where he's been. Uh, I don't know, I know that, about I, that. Yeah, you can't say that. Dude. I don't can't know about that. that. Yeah, you know, like you look that. at you look at Jim Harbaugh and his struggles to keep locker rooms together. Yeah. That only works at the college level. It, I mean, his players in San Francisco did not respect him, and it's why I think he stayed at Michigan because he's had other NFL opportunities and he's turned them down. You. Guys like Saban, Urban Meyer, Jim Harbaugh, your act wears thin very quickly at the NFL level because you don't have your thumb on a guy anymore. Mm -hmm. you, 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 can't, you can't tell a guy, hey, I'm going to pull your scholarship if you don't wipe your ass a certain direction. Well, now even at the college right? level, that's, that's not even been that, – that's kind of been taken away in a sense. Like now it's shifted to do you win or do you lose as a head coach? Just straight up. Yeah. Do, do you win or do you lose? And if you win, you're going to get guys. Yeah, I, 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 I don't disagree with that at all. Greg Romano says, uh, Jay Hill, D.C., Kelly Papinga, and Sean Nua is position coach. Sean Nua is not leaving no. USC to be a D-line coach at BYU. That would shock me. Yeah. He is up for assistant coach of the year. But he better be getting paid I mean, if they, he's doing that. I think it's a very difficult ask to say to a guy, hey, come be a D-line coach after you've been a D-line coach at several stops. If he's going to leave SC, it's got to be to be a coordinator. You can't leave to be a, a D line coach. At, you can't leave USC to be a D line coach at BYU. Yeah, you you can't do That's that. That's not good for your career. That's not. Uh, Todd Johnson says, "What is the case for Ohio State over USC? Sit home and avoid a loss in a conference game." Yeah, well, I, again, I don't make any case for Ohio State. I don't believe Ohio State is one of the. I don't know that they're one of the top eight teams in the country. Yeah, uh, honestly, I do not. I really don't. Um, that, that part for me is I struggle with that. Uh, Roger sales says, explain the details of how the transfer portal works. Do players reach out to schools? Do schools reach out to players? Do you literally register? You're an available player. Yeah, there is a, there, it, it essentially is a communication channel. You put your name 
think of it as a list. You put your name on a list and you say, hey, I am DJ Uyunglele uh, from Clemson. I am not going to play football at Clemson anymore. I want. I am available. Are you interested? And you essentially ha- reach out to schools. You have, you know, you you have whoever your per- people are or yourself reach out to schools. Schools will reach out to you, and you're going to make a decision based on where you where you want to end up or what your goal is. I mean, if your goal is to go and play one year and then be in the NFL, you're going to make a different decision than if you have three years of eligibility left and hey, I'm going to go play three years here. Yeah, like it's a it's a totally different. It's a totally different thing, you know. Like Jacob Conover, I don't. I, he's not looking for a one-stop shop to go to the NFL. I wouldn't think. So, like, they, every guy's different, yeah. in my opinion. You know, like it, it's just, it's it's an interesting conversation. I will say that. Uh, let's see. Um, who else? Todd Johnson says I'm not a USC fan. Just saying, justify Ohio State over them. I I can't. I can't. I think There's I think no justification. USC is a better team. Yeah. Than the problem with USC is they can <clears throat> no longer say they're a better team than Utah. I mean, you can't. You can't. Oh, hey, we were on the road. Tough game. Okay, cool. But you can no longer say that you're a better team. You got smoked in the Pac-12 championship game. Yeah. Absolutely smoked. I mean, you know, it. it yeah. I don't know. Richard McDonald says, why do you read Tanner's comments? He just seems like such an unhappy negative guy. Because he is largely. But Tanner's been a longtime listener of this show. Like, I, I like Tanner. Tanner goes in waves. So Tanner will, with all due respect, Tanner, like you, bro. Not trying to hate. But there will be weeks where you decide you want to get on Twitter and you want to talk a load of junk and you want to be salty. And you'll do that in the comments. And then, you know, we'll beat down your door and we'll... T- explain exactly why you're wrong about this or about that or why telling like why saying hey you guys hate on every reporter is an absolute garbage and embarrassing take and then you'll back down and you'll go back to who you usually are and that's just the cycle doesn't mean i don't like you i love having you on the show you are a long time it is fun like we have a lot of fun but the fact is is you're going to say something like that and then i can see your comment that says you weren't being salty and you were being salty. You were trying to stir the pot. That's I wasn't fine. picking a fight. All I was asking is if you guys thought the Papinga report was real. The issue with you <laughs> asking if the Papinga report is real or not is because it, the issue with that is that report is not, like it's no. Obvious, what he wants dude. to like, do, what he wants to do, is have us say no. It's BS. No, no. And then he'll go back to that reporter, and and it's there's no there's no like why would why would you even think if you tweeted that at me that I would answer that. You don't roll out a report that says, hey, it's and, expected. And I know that guy. I know yeah. his work. I know his work. Yeah. He's not, he's not, like, it's just, Tanner, it's a bad look for you, dude. It, it's, it's a bad look, dude. That, and again, that's I want to be really clear because I don't want this to get misconstrued or there to be confusion or to you to, for you to go into the, you know, hey, like, you know, I'm Mr. Negative guy or whatever like we don't dislike you but you know the mantra on this show it's the truth in salt lake sports talk so we are going to say when buddy the soccer writer should have no business having an ap vote or when or when a certain beat writer in this town has no idea what he's doing or when tony jones does phenomenal work or when rudy gobert is a french player who's soft and gets in fights that he has no business being in fights on did the floor. Did you see what yes. he did? The, yes. Where he, I'm, yes, it's on. classic Rudy Gobert, but I'm just saying that's the point. So when we said, when they signed Rudy Gobert to that long-term extension, and we said on this show that day that that was a mistake and you were never going to win a championship, and folks like Tanner and everyone else were saying we were idiots, and then they all came back around like, that's what happens. That's sports talk. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you were being salty, and I would actually prefer if you just embraced it. It's fine. Like, it's fine. Like, the dude's name in, in this comment section is salty drunk for a reason, yeah. right? Like, we know right. what Ruff's official brings to the table. We know what some yeah. of these guys bring. Salty drunk says, uh, go easy on Tanner. Uh, by the way, he still has a picture of Forex Gold that he owes us. Which is incredible. Uh, go easy on Tanner, guys. He just woke up to a flat tire on his BMX bike, and he's so... He's so and his soaking is going through a dry spell. <laughs> That's yeah, see, what you, you but expect. But you know what you're going to get out of out of him. That's what you expect. Like, come on. Uh, NY Monty fan says, let's hit that like button, folks. Appreciate that. 134 people watching. If everybody gives us a like right now, 
helps the channel grow. By the way, on our mission to get to uh, 9,000 by the end of the year, which I, I don't know, it's going to be tight. We're at 8,213 subs on this uh, here YouTube channel. So search Google, just Google search The Monty Show. Please. Um, all of our stuff comes up. We're on audio podcast as well. And if you're listening on audio podcast, Spotify has been phenomenal for us. We really appreciate that. Uh, please do consider giving us a subscribe on YouTube. It really helps our channel grow. Um, this is our main platform for distribution. We absolutely love it. So uh, trying to get to 9,000 by the end of the year. If we do so, we will take you plus one. One of our subscribers plus one will be going to the Utah Jazz game against Cleveland uh, and Donovan Mitchell uh, with us. The four of us will go to a yeah. game. We'll do it in a black car. Yeah, uh, We'll take you to the game and even buy you any uh, item. You want a sweatshirt or a custom jersey from the team store, we'll hook it up. But now, let me tell you what now. Just because we're nice guys. 